Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Equilibrium Part 1, where today we're going to be talking about, we're going to give a general introduction to equilibrium and talk a little bit about the equilibrium constant. So, uh, the thing with the, the, pre, the pretext for equilibrium is, is that some reactions are going to go to completion. So if you had a reaction where A is reacting to produce B, at the start you might have a bunch of these brown A molecules, um, but at the end you have uh, just all of these white product B molecules. So at the start, it's all reactants, and at the end, it's all products. And if you were to graph the concentrations of A and B over time, it would look something like this. So A goes down at a linear, a linear rate, and B also goes up at a linear rate. So at the end, you, st you uh, end off with all B and no A, but you start off with all A and no B. However, not all reactions go to completion. You could have a reaction where A is in equilibrium with B. So at the start, you have a bunch of these brown A reactant molecules, but at the end, you have uh, some B, mo B product molecules, but you still have some of those reactant uh, brown A molecules being present. And so if you were to graph the concentrations of A and B over time, in this case, it would look a little different. You would have a curve where the concentrations of A go down for a period of time, and then after a while they start to stabilize. On the other hand, for B, the concentration goes up and eventually starts to stabilize. So uh, where in this point, where, uh, like what point of time do you think the equilibrium exists? Where do you think the reaction has reached equilibrium? It would be around here where the concentrations of A and B have started to stabilize. And the misleading thing about this is that you might assume that the concentrations of A and B are not changing whatsoever. Uh, you have the concentration being a stable number throughout. But that's not really true. In fact, we don't really have equilibrium. Equilibrium is not constant. Instead, what we have is something called dynamic equilibrium. What dynamic equilibrium means is that even when you are seeming to be constant, if you really zoomed into this concentration line, what you would find is that there are tiny fluctuations in the concentration. So the concentrations of A might go up and down, up and down constantly, um, and it's at a microscopic level. And so what dynamic equilibrium means is that the rate of your forward reaction is, ha is the same rate as your reverse reaction. So the, the, the rate at which A is turning into B and the rate at which B is turning back into A are equal. So although you have these tiny fluctuations in concentration, over time, it looks like nothing's happening. There's no net change because the rate at which the forward reaction is happening is the same rate at which the reverse reaction is happening. Um, a helpful analogy would be uh, comparing you know, a stable weight. So a stable weight happens when you take in the same number of calories uh, that you burn. And so when someone maintains a weight, it doesn't mean that they're not eating or losing calories. It just means that they're uh, eating, they're, they're getting calories and burning it off at a constant rate. So the net change in their weight is zero. And so that's what it means for equilibrium to be dynamic. And all equilibrium is dynamic. You have these constant fluctuations, but over time there's no net change because the, the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. And so let's talk a little bit about different types of equilibrium. Let's look at this reaction where A is in equilibrium with B. And at the start, you have a bunch of these red A uh, reactant molecules. And at the end, you have a bunch of these blue uh, B product molecules and some of those reactant molecules still in there. If you look at a, a different reaction like B, uh, C is in equilibrium with D, at the start, you might have a bunch of these start C molecules. But at the end, you have only a few uh, D molecules being formed, only a few products being formed. At the end, you still have a lot of reactants. And so the difference between the reaction on the left and the reaction on the right is that the reaction on the left is more product favored, meaning you have a lot more products in your final state than you do reactants. But the reaction on the right, you have uh, it's more reactant favored. So you have a lot more reactants than you do products. And so we need a mathematical way to describe that relationship. We need a way to describe the conditions at which a reaction reaches equilibrium and uh, the equilibrium constant does that. So the equilibrium constant is a general description of the equilibrium conditions. The equilibrium constant is a, is a helpful way to tell you whether or not you have a bunch of products in your, in your final state or a bunch of reactants or somewhere in between. 
And so for a reaction A, uh, a plus B is in equilibrium with C and D, your equilibrium constant is going to be the concentration of C to the power C times the concentration of D to the power D over the concentration of A to the power A times the concentration of B to the power B. So it's all your products over your reactants. Um, and so those brackets just represent concentrations. It's in, uh, it's in molarity. And so whenever you use, whenever you find the equilibrium constant using concentrations, uh, we name that Kc. Sometimes you might just see it as normal K because it's so widely used, but there's also a different type of equilibrium constant. This equilibrium constant is called Kp. This is the equilibrium constant using partial pressures. Kp can only be used whenever all your reactants and products are gases. So in this case, if A, B, C, and D were all gases, your Kp would be your partial pressure of C to the power C times the partial pressure of D to the power D over the partial pressure of A to the power A times the partial pressure of B to the power of B. Um, and so depending on what data you're given, you might be given a bunch of partial pressures. And uh, if you wanted to find the equilibrium constant using that, you would have to use this formula instead. Um, remember, in order to use Kp, all your reactants and products must be gases. And the important distinction to make is that the value you get for Kp is not necessarily, it's necessarily the same value that you get for Kc. So there is a relationship between Kp and Kc. If you have a reaction A plus B is in equilibrium with C and D, and all your reactants and products are gases, then your Kp, or the equilibrium constant using partial pressures, is equal to Kc, or the partial pressure using concentrations, times RT to the delta N. Uh, R is your gas constant, is 0.083145 in this case. Uh, the units are liters times bar over Kelvin times uh, moles, um, but the units are really there for housekeeping. Uh, the number is really what's important. The T is your absolute temperature, or the, or the temperature in Kelvin, and your delta N is C plus D minus A plus B. So it's the stoichiometric coefficients uh, of the product summed up minus the stoichiometric coefficients of the reactant summed up. And this uh, equation might seem to come out of nowhere. There is a derivation for it, and I'll have a video up on that if you would like to know how this equation is derivated. Um, there's one more thing about equilibriums that I want to talk about. There's two different types of equilibriums. There's homogeneous equilibrium and heterogeneous equilibrium. Homogeneous equilibrium is really simple. It's just when all your reactants and products are the same phases. So for example, if they were all gases, then you could use Kp and that would be a homogeneous equilibrium. The other one is a heterogeneous equilibrium. These are equilibriums involving multiple phases. So an example would be like 2A gas plus 3B solid is an equilibrium with 3 aqueous, C aqueous and uh, 2D liquid. And the thing about these uh, equilibriums and all equilibri equilibriums is that pure solids and liquids do not count towards your equilibrium constants. There's experimental and thermodynamic reasons for why this doesn't happen, um, but the Kc of this reaction, this equilibrium, would be the concentration of C over the concentration of A squared. So the only phases that count towards your equilibrium, uh, equilibrium a constant is aqueous phases, like the one for C, and the gaseous phases, like the one for A. And of course, you have a, uh, a power of 2 on the A because there is a stoichiometric coefficient of 2 on the A. Um, and that's it. That's a general introduction to equilibrium. I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something. Um, consider leaving a like and subscribing if you uh, want to help. And um, I hope to see you later. Thank you.